Hey guys, it's Ryan from Jamming Station. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial video on how to set up an audio interface. So after the session last week, some of you guys will have taken a kit home like this. And I just thought the easiest thing to do would be to set it up with you, show you what you've got and how it all works. So. In the box, one of the main components in there is this guy, the audio interface, or you might have also heard it called a sound card. And what this does is let you plug microphones and instruments into your computer. So that takes uh, an XLR microphone lead there, but also into the middle of it, you can plug a jack lead like you would have in a guitar. So it connects to the computer on the back. It's got USB out of the back of here and it goes into a, a big normal USB on your computer. So this end out of the back of the interface and this end into your computer. And that's about it for setting that up because everything else you do in the box, it doesn't require any power because it gets its power from the USB. So on the back here, you've also got outputs where you would plug into speakers if you've got that option or on the front is where you would plug in headphones. But I'll go through all that again when we need those controls when we're in the box in a minute. So you would also have a microphone, but I'm using it here, so I can't show you that. Well, here it is. Ta -da! You've got a set of studio headphones. These are quite nice headphones. They've got a regular size stereo jack on the bottom, but if you do need the smaller size, it just unscrews and it's under there. On the interface, it's a regular size, so you won't need to take that off. And you've got a pop shield, like I'm using here. That catches the plosives on the microphone, so when you're singing p b uh, P's and B's, it doesn't, um, it catches all that air that would otherwise go into the microphone and make a horrible sound. And that just clips onto your mic stand with this little guy here. And some of you may also have taken a USB keyboard, but I don't have one of, oh, actually I do have a big one back here, but uh, I don't have one of the little ones that you guys have taken. So I might do a follow-up video on how to plug that in if you need it. Feel free to hit me up if you've got any questions. Cool, I think we should just get on with it. I'm gonna be concentrating today on using this with BandLab, which is the um, recording software that we've been trialing recently. But the, this setup should work with any DAW, from Logic to Ableton to GarageBand, whatever you're using, the setup process will be very, very similar. So hopefully it'll help you whatever platform you're working on. Okay, so I'm just going to run you through the setup quickly. As I said before, it's very, very simplistic. So you take your USB lead that came in the box. This end here in the back of the interface, this end here, straight into your USB slot if you have one, or if you've got a new Mac like I have, that's only got Thunderbolt, then you're gonna need one of these, which converts USB to Thunderbolt. And that is the end of the setup. As you can see, or yeah, as you can see, the lights have come on now to show it's getting power from the computer. You won't see anything happen necessarily on the computer. Oh, I've got. Uh, so, as you can see on my computer now, maybe I should be screen capturing. Go to API.focusrite innovation to connect. So it actually brought up a link in the corner there to show where I, I need to start screen capturing. I'm just going to pause a second. Okay, so now I'm recording the screen as well. So as soon as I plug the interface in, it brought me to the uh, Focusrite website. And it says here, let's get you started. Create your account. Creating an account gives you access to your included music software, plugins, samples, value, essential software, included music making software, watch tutorials, I want to register my Scarlet. I already have a Focusrite Novation or Amplify account. Log me in. Actually, you don't need any of that. You can just close the window because 
We're not going to use any of the software that comes bundled with it or anything. We're just going to use it straight up as an audio interface. So you can just ignore all of that. So we're going to go to BandLab. If you haven't already created your BandLab account, that is something you'll need to do. Um, so if you're under 16 as well, you're going to have to ask your parent to create the BandLab for you, the BandLab account for you. Unfortunately, that's just the way it has to be. So once we're in BandLab, I'm just going to... So I'm already in a band with Lola and Izzy Skate. So this is a track that we started creating the other day, and I'm just going to open this in the mix editor as a, as a very quick way of showing you setting this up. So as I said before, what this allows you to do, I'll show this camera again, is it allows you to plug mics and instruments into these inputs here, right? And once it's plugged in, this will be the input volume for each channel. There's two channels. And then this is the monitor volume. So like the output volume, if you like, okay? There's some other buttons along here, but we'll get to those in a minute. So looking at my screen here, you can see along the top we've got this is Izzy's guitar line, and then we built some drums. So if I display you what's there. We made this very quickly just to try it out and see if it worked, which it did. So I'm going to add a track down the bottom here. What would I like to do? What kind of track would I like to add? So for the sake of argument in the minute, I'm going to record a microphone track. So once I've got my microphone track set up, I need to make sure that it's receiving the microphone into here. So once you've got your microphone plugged in, um, but before we hear any sound in the program, there's one more step that we have to do. You have to go to your system preferences. Now, if you're on a on a Mac, you go to system preferences and then select sound. If you're on a PC, this is where it might differ slightly. And if you do hit any walls here, um, just get in touch with me. But it should, when you locate your sound input and output settings, you should be able to find the bit where you're selecting what input and output settings the computer wants to use and in that it should just automatically show up you want this one the scarlet 2i2 which is the name of the interface we've just plugged in if you select it to be your input and your output then what that's telling the computer is that you you want it to receive the signal and also when you play back the music you want it to play back through the scarlet as well so that you can use the headphones to listen to it or speakers if you've got them plugged in so that should now be the microphone set up. Um, this mic that you've all been given requires what's called phantom power. It requires power from the from the USB. I can show this camera over here, I've just realized. So this button here, 48V it says, that's phantom power. Uh, and to get this microphone working, you're also going to have to turn phantom power on. I just need to plug the mic back in to, before I do that. Uh, and make sure you don't plug or unplug the mic while phantom power is on. Always make sure the mic's plugged in. Then you turn phantom power on, turn phantom power off again before you unplug the mic. And that will just look after the mic. And well, once we're that far, we should be ready to start seeing some signal in the computer. So hopefully now that I've got my mic plugged in here, and phantom power turned on. I should start seeing signal in here. And if you click the little microphone button here, you should be able to see your input level there. And then with the volume knob on there, you can control how loud the signal is going in, okay? And that is the basics of recording a track through your interface into BandLab. Now, let's say you wanted to add a second layer to what we just recorded there um, I would click add track at the top here choose what kind of instrument I want to uh, record so if you select instruments there you're going to be playing their virtual instruments and that's where you would need a USB keyboard um, so 
I'm just going to record a... Oh, I'm going to try a guitar, actually. Let's try a guitar. So this time I will plug a jack lead into the input. Guitars don't require phantom power. So, in fact, no instruments require phantom power. That's just a mic thing. So be, ca be careful to leave that off. So let's set up a guitar. Where is my guitar? So if it's acoustic guitar that you're recording, then you probably actually get better results just using the condenser mic, the same mic that we used for the voice, and setting it up aiming somewhere at the 12th fret on the guitar, somewhere between half a foot and a foot away. Experiment, play around until you find a nice sound. But just for the sake of argument, I'm going to plug, because my guitar also plugs in. So I'm just going to plug it in with a jack, just so we can try the other setting on the USB, on the interface. I've definitely got jack leads just handy, because I knew I was making a video. So I was prepared. Oh, look. That looks like I set that up. I definitely wasn't prepared. I definitely <laughs> didn't know there was a jack lead just in there. So jack lead into the guitar, other end of the jack lead into the interface, and it just plugs in the middle there, can you see that? Check this one's actually still recording, is it? Yes it is, cool. Um, and then, so do I have to do it? do the same thing so if I click this little signal here now I can see my input level there so that's can you see how that's going red at the top there so that's showing that my guitar signal is too hot I need to turn it down so now if I needed if I wanted to hear the other tracks back while I was doing this I would also need to plug headphones in but I'm not going to worry about that for now theoretically if I plugged my headphones in now and press record I would hear what was recorded on the first track and I would be able to play along to it. But as it was just me talking anyway, we don't really need to hear that. So I might even just mute it off. So I just press record now. It's got the little counting set up. And then once this white bar starts moving, I can record my guitar. And there it is there, you see? So that's the basics of using the interface. Now, as I said before, this is a track that Lola, Izzy and I made together just to try and test this software out. So if I exit this now, if I click exit here, it's going to say, would I like to save the changes I've made? If I do click save, now, when other people log into this track, they'll, in this in this little section here, they'll be able to see the changes that I've made. If I click View Project History, you can see Ryan Hamilton made an adjustment just now. And before that, you can see when the previous adjustment was. And you're able to open the earlier versions of it. So you're able to really keep track of how the track developed and who added what at what stage and, and how that changed the direction of it. So that's another really cool bit of this software. Uh, I think that's about everything you need to know for now, but definitely feel free to hit me up if you've got any questions or you hit any problems, and I'll do my best to help. Nice one, guys. I will see you soon. Bye.